The next story is loosely based on an incident that happened in a Bolingbroke, Illinois Denny's. The culprit in question is shown in the mugshot here. He went to celebrate his birthday at the Denny's with a friend after being heavily under the influence. But things went south real quick. Here's an animation inspired by the occurrence, with a large dose of nightmare fuel to go along with it. One night, two drunken men entered the restaurant. Of course, there was nothing wrong with them being drunk. I'm used to encountering people like that, especially from 9pm onwards. But something was unsettling about the way they were ogling me, especially the older guy who sent me a flying kiss and winked. I admit he was gross, but I let it slide and approached them to ask about their orders. Moments later, the younger gentleman told his friend he had to take a piss, so when he left for the restroom, it was just me and the creepy old man whose lecherous stare made me feel like I should pass this on to another waitress. But to my dismay, the other waitress had her hands full, which meant I had no choice but to take this guy's order. Hi, what can I get you? I said with a neutral tone. Well, 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 fancy seeing you here. Weren't you that lady from Hooters I met a long time ago? He said, his entire body sluggish. Sorry, I'm not that girl. I've never worked at Hooters. I replied, annoyed that he evaded my query. Really? Oh, shockers. I thought for sure you were her because you're so damn f Tell you what. Then, he leaned in closer and said in a low tone, You can rest those f after bringing me my meal. What do you say? Once again, his eyes were ogling me. The best thing I could do was report him. However, since he didn't commit any physical harassment or attempt to do so, I had no solid evidence to support my claim if I ever decided to complain. So the only option I had was to get this over with. I won't ask you again. What is your order? I said callously. Whoa, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a one over here. I love my like that. Old men like me if you know what I mean. He replied, licking his lips. Infuriated, I turned my back. However, as I took a step in the opposite direction, the old man suddenly grabbed my hand and said, Whoa, calm down, Miss Universe. You ain't gonna go without my order, are you? Let go of me! I said with intensity. Unfortunately, I still had to keep my voice down to avoid causing a scene. Alright, easy now, he said in a semi-stupor as he chuckled triumphantly. Well, I'm not really familiar with Denny's, but I think I'll have a Grand Slam special. And oh, I want you to put a lot of cherry sauce on those pancakes. You got that, honey? night. <laughs> I took note of his request without making eye contact. Then, I immediately went back to the counter, where the cashier gazed at me with concerned eyes. Then, as I took a sidelong glance, I saw the old man shed tears. And from the looks of it, he seemed pretty sad. So at that moment, I began to feel sorry for him. And perhaps his personal issues were the main reason he decided to get drunk. <sighs> Poor guy. I told myself. As I brought him his meal, he gestured for me to sit next to him and he wasn't as aggressive as he was earlier. Moments later, he said with a gloomy expression, Today's my birthday. I was supposed to celebrate it with my family, but since my wife and child don't want to see me anymore, I don't think I can afford to be happy. Looking down at my skirt, his words struck me hard. So, guilty for the way I felt earlier, I consented to his request and stupidly sat beside him. However, what happened next completely caught me off guard. Hey, buddy, what took you so long? Did you destroy the toilet? We haven't even eaten yet. The old geezer's friend flumped beside me, immobilizing me as I sat helplessly between them. There was clearly an open space on the other side of the booth, so I knew something was up. This meant I was essentially sandwiched between two greasy drunks. I tried my best to remain calm, glancing nervously at my surroundings as I racked my brain for a way to escape. What's the matter, honey? You seem edgy all of a sudden, the old man said with a minatory grin. Yeah, there's nothing to worry about. We're just feeling a bit lonely tonight, that's all. The guy who came from the restroom added. I tried to make eye contact with the customers leaving the restaurant to ask for their help. From an outside perspective, it appeared as though we were having fun, as the men on both sides spoke to me casually. Therefore, since there was no threat or malice, other people in the restaurant, including the staff, quickly brushed me off. As the number of customers dwindled, the amount of pressure weighed on me even more. I wanted so badly to approach the chef. However, since I was sandwiched between two guys, it was risky to cry out for help. Who knew if they had pocket knives? They could easily stab me multiple times and I would be a goner for sure. Pinned between such awful men, I caught the strong scent of liquor and the foul odor of bodies that I hadn't bathed in days. It was disgusting to say the least, and I feared what they would do to me. Moments later, upon gazing at his pancakes, the old man suddenly threw a tantrum and exclaimed, Why is there no cherry sauce on this one? Then, glancing at me, he said, 
Didn't I specifically tell you to add tons of cherry sauce? Dude, it's not that time of the month yet. Look at her. Doesn't she seem perfect to get in my birthday suit? Hey, sharing is caring, you old hag. Not a moment sooner. Both guys wrapped their arms around my shoulders, creating the illusion we were pals, whispering smutty things that would forever traumatize me. Then, as the old man toyed with my hair, he said, You know, since it's my birthday and all, why don't you feed me? My body trembled as I looked down at his plate and did as he asked. As soon as I brought the fork to his mouth, he enveloped my entire hand with his mouth like some kind of horse, caressing it as he sucked the piece of pancake clean away. Moments later, his friend pushed me to kiss the old man. However, I refused adamantly and claimed I had a boyfriend. Enraged, the creep yelled, But it's my birthday, not his! When it's his birthday, it'll be his turn! Got that? Having no choice, I eventually caved in. Then, I leaned in to give the creep a peck on the cheek. But as I did that, he forced me to make out with him. His friend began to egg us on, and the man held my head with an iron grip. As we made out, I felt a searing pain in my mouth. And then the old man bit my tongue. This torment brought me indescribable horrors as my mouth bled incessantly. I eventually broke free from his kiss of death as he laughed like a raving lunatic, eyes red with malice and blood oozing from his mouth, saying, There you go! Now I've got my chair sauce! <laughs> All that adrenaline gave me the strength to push his friend off the chair and run to the kitchen, where my colleagues immediately called the cops. Luckily, they were still there when the police arrived. However, since that night, I can never look at Denny's food the same way again and I avoid anything that has a cherry. I've been working the Denny's graveyard shift for a couple years now, and I've seen my fair share of strange and stressful things during my time there, as I'm sure almost any Denny's employee can say. The location I work at is especially sketchy though. It's in a heavily rundown area where most of the buildings, including the Denny's, are in a significant state of disrepair. On top of that, the crime rate is pretty high. I'm quite used to getting robbed at gunpoint while working or seeing drive-bys and car chases go down on the street right outside the window. And of course, dealing with the obligatory regular crowd of rowdy trunks and loitering creeps. Unfortunately, the management is willfully negligent about the entire situation. My boss doesn't care at all about keeping up the face of the business, as in his words, nobody cares about a couple bad characters. People know what to expect when they come around here. I guess he's got a point about that because aside from me and him, the only other person who works the night shift is the one cook who doesn't care one bit about the quality of food he serves. With the sort of people I work around, I've gotten pretty good about keeping things cool. There's no such thing as security at Denny's, so I always try as hard as I can not to get confrontational with anyone. For instance, there was this one guy who randomly started coming in on a nightly basis. He was this frail old man who was unusually tall and cartoonishly thin. He was barely able to fold up his legs to fit in the booth. It's always hard to tell how much of an eater a customer is going to be, but this guy was definitely a surprise, as he looked like he hadn't eaten in years. Good evening, welcome to Denny's. Would you like to start with a drink or are you ready to order? Oh, I'm ready, Sonny. Give me the Grand Slam special. Are you sure? It's quite the bill if you don't finish the challenge. Never underestimate my appetite, Sonny. I could eat you and your entire family in a single sitting if I wanted to. Now go put in my order. Sure thing. I was caught off guard by his order. The Grand Slam is a corporate promotional menu item. Sort of a fusion of an all-you-can-eat buffet and an eating challenge. It's 20 full-size buttermilk pancakes split into two stacks of 10. And if you can eat all of them in 15 minutes or less, it's free. It's usually meant to be split between two people or even more. So whenever I see someone order it by themselves, I know they're about to fail. I've seen men 10 times that guy's size get close, but never succeed. Personally, I can only eat three of those pancakes before I'm full. Anymore and I start to feel sick. I can never imagine eating 20. You probably wouldn't believe it unless you saw it with your own eyes, but this guy put the challenge to shame. I set the food down on the table and walked back to the kitchen. I then watched with the cook from the kitchen as the skin and bone stick of a man picked up an entire stack of pancakes, unhinged his jaw, then stuffed all ten pancakes in his mouth and swallowed them without even chewing. The cook and I just looked at each other in absolute disbelief. But before we could even find words for what we'd just seen, the man was disappearing the other stack down his gullet all the same. Then, just like that, the old man, now with a distended belly, got up and walked out without paying a dime. He didn't even tip. 
My coworker and I immediately tried to relay this information to our boss, but he didn't believe us until he saw the security footage. What in the hell? How's that possible? Is there anything we can do about that? I had to make 20 whole pancakes and he didn't even taste a single one. Not officially. But if he keeps doing this, we'll have to get creative. What's that supposed to mean? Don't worry about it. Let us handle it. Keep that smiley face nice and ignorant. I really thought that such a feat was a fluke that could never be recreated. But to my surprise, the frail old man came back the very next day. And somehow, there was no way to tell that he'd eaten 20 pancakes the night before. The bulge in his belly was gone, and he looked as deathly thin as before. Welcome back, sir. What can I get you for tonight? Oh, come on, Sonny. We don't have to play this pointless game of manners, do we? You know what I want. <sighs> Let me guess. Another Grand Slam? That's it. And get used to it. I begrudgingly put the ticket up. And the cook, being one of those people who was adverse to work, looked absolutely pissed. I knew he was going to do something unsavory to the food, but I didn't want to know what. But at the same time, I really couldn't help myself from looking. What I saw wasn't very creative, but it was nasty. The cook hocked up a big ball of mucus and spat between every pancake in both stacks. I was honestly surprised by his boldness, but I guess if you're going to do something like that, you don't take half measures. After serving the man his food, the cook and I both watched from the kitchen once again. But this time, the cook was much more enthralled. I don't know what he was expecting, but the man ate all the pancakes in the exact same fashion as the previous night, in two inhumanely massive bites. The cook looked a little disappointed that the man hadn't tasted anything off about the pancakes, but I'm sure he didn't bother tasting them to begin with. This went on for a few weeks. Every single night, the skinniest man I've ever seen in my life would come in and put away 20 pancakes in about 30 seconds, mm -hmm. then come in the next night looking like it had all gone straight through him, like he had some kind of tapeworm living in his gut. That's when my boss noticed that the man would usually guzzle down an entire glass of water after finishing his food. And I think that's when the light bulb went off in his head. The next day, my boss forced me to get in on it. Hey, I need a penny from you. Don't ask why. Um, alright boss, I think I've got one. Here. A minute later, I saw the cook take the penny from my boss and sneak it in the stack. I thought they'd clean out their pockets for change and put a coin in between each one. I don't know what possessed them to be so childishly vindictive, but my co-workers were highly invested in trying to screw with this guy. But that's not even the worst of it. The cook powered off a gallon of pancake batter and made a special batch, adding in an exorbitant amount of baking soda to the mixture and stirring it in. The resulting pancakes were suspiciously puffy, but for some reason the customer paid no mind. I also watched my boss pour the man's glass of water, except he didn't use any water at all. He filled the entire glass with vinegar, and perhaps another solvent I was unaware of. The customer must have had no sense of taste or smell, as the entire restaurant reeked of vinegar because of this. Then, all three of us eagerly watched to see the outcome. Two jaw-dropping bites, stuffing the pancakes down his throat, then a long guzzle to wash it all down. The man wiped his mouth and didn't even notice that anything was wrong. He started to get up and walk away, but then something stopped him. He groaned and began to clutch his stomach, which was ballooning in size far more than it ever had before. He started belching and foaming at the mouth and keeled over trying to vomit, but all he could do was choke. Before long, his entire stomach was doubled in size, and then he exploded. Blood and gut spewed in every direction. A hollowed out carcass of a man was all that was left behind. The blood mist got everywhere and in all the carnage, I heard the rolling of a coin. I watched the penny spin and tumble to a stop, <gasps> and that's when I realized I recognize that penny. The next story was inspired by a Denny's incident that occurred around the Christmas holidays. They say the customer is always right, but in this case, the customer takes his stance to a whole new level. Here, you can see a mugshot of the alleged culprit. It's what he did that shocked the Denny staff members and customers. Here's a dramatized animation of what went down that one Christmas night at Denny's. Everybody knows about congested streets and vacation sprees in and out of the country during this time of year. But what I despised most about December here at Denny's were the staff members who had applied for time off a month ago and were now enjoying days of endless barbecue nights and spas with their families. 
The restaurant owner would always plead that I help him out during holidays, luring me in with promises of better incentives. So one day I had to attend to several customers simultaneously, while coordinating with my colleagues who was assigned to work in the kitchen. And this was probably the worst case scenario, because there were only two of us today. The other three staff members called in sick, so naturally we had several angry customers grumbling about the slow service. Hey, I've got a meeting at 10.30 a.m. Is there any way you can make my eggs faster? A guy in a suit said. This branch is the worst. You guys should close down instead. An old woman exclaimed. There wasn't enough time for me to take breaks in between, so this season was an endurance test for my colleague and me. Later on, a man with a crew-cut hairstyle and freckled face approached the counter. His eyebrows furrowed as he drummed his fingers impatiently on the countertop, while I had my hands full of bedding my colleague in the kitchen, making omelets and toasting bread. From my peripheral vision, I could see him gritting his teeth, his face turning red. Then, when his temper went out of control, he threw the service bell on the floor, stomping it with his feet like a child going off on a tantrum. I'll be right with you, sir. Just a minute. I hollered as I sliced some chicken tenders. A minute? I've been waiting here for hours! He cried out, this time banging on the countertop. Since my colleague was new on the job, she was agitated. So to help mitigate the tension, I said, I got this. I left the kitchen and approached the counter where the customer was still waiting for me. Where the hell are my pancakes? I don't want to see your pancakes. I want my Denny's pancakes. Now! He said, squeezing his hands into a fist. I heaved a troublous sigh, aware he was the type of customer who wouldn't listen to reason. So, remaining in the driver's seat, I replied, I understand how you feel, sir, but right now we still have- I don't have time for your excuses. Just get me what I asked for, or else- He picked up the service bell and threw it at my head, catching the attention of all the other customers. I'd been cussed at multiple times in the past, and honestly, I couldn't blame him for feeling the way he felt. But I didn't bust my chops just to be ridiculed in public and physically assaulted. Did he ever work in a restaurant? And did he ever experience working overtime, constantly exposed to a toxic environment such as this one? He didn't seem to be the type of person who would put himself in other people's shoes. So, unable to contain my agitation, I said, Or else what? I've got 20 other customers who came in before you, and they're all waiting for their orders just like you. So, if you have nothing better to say, you can sit down and wait like a good little boy, or you just leave and find another restaurant. Plain and simple. Everyone was astounded, including my colleague in the kitchen, but not this guy. He was so adamant about his pancakes and Grand Slam special that he threw a fit and began kicking the tables and chairs, yanking the blackout window roller blades until they came off. Sir, if you don't stop doing that, I'm afraid I will have to cancel your order and call the cops. He jerked his head in my direction, and with a malicious grin, he suddenly stopped and sat down as I warned. This allowed me to go back into the kitchen and assist my colleague once more. However, moments later, I heard screaming coming from the dining area. And when I came to check, I saw the creep invading other customers' tables, stealing their salt and pepper, swilling them down like they were some kind of energy drink. Sir, please stop! We don't need you being any more salty than you already are! I said aloud. It was so horrifying that I asked him to stop immediately, to which he replied, But I'm so hungry! Then, just when I thought he was done tormenting me with his demented behavior, he began licking off dirty plates from empty tables, stuffing his mouth with leftover bread and meat as he drooled and laughed like a raving lunatic. <laughs> I didn't know how to approach this guy. In fact, I wasn't sure if I wanted to reach out to him in the first place, primarily because of how he gripped the table knife, which made him look intimidating. My worst fear was that he would go on a rampage and take it out on the other customers, causing them physical harm as he did to me earlier. Moments later, I heard the sound of broken glass followed by customers' screams. So, as I sauntered towards the counter, I saw the crazy man sitting in front of some 
guy trembling in fear. He waved the broken glass dangerously, his smile a devilish grin. I remembered seeing the helpless customer surrender his plate of pancakes and chicken wings. I could hear him quivering while saying, It's okay, you can have it if you want. The creep laughed gaily, pulling the plate and utensils towards him, saying, Don't mind if I do! Then, he dug in without a tinge of reluctance, eating like a wild animal. Inch by inch, the customer sidled until he created some separation between himself and the crazed man and scurried out of the restaurant. I then shouted, Get the hell out of here or I'm calling the cops! Annoyed, the creep set the table napkin on fire, and then he threw the object to the Christmas tree with a flustering grin and said, Merry Christmas! My colleague and I quickly ran over and extinguished the fire, allowing the culprit to escape. All of the customers yelled and ran out amid the fire, and we called the police to track down the psycho. The following day, we explained everything to our employer, and she promised to hire more staff, hoping that this incident would never happen again. However, I still get chills whenever our orders are backed up. Where the hell are my pancakes? I don't want to see your pancakes! I want my Denny's pancakes! Now!